The production process has been kept private by the Hershey Company located in Hershey, Pennsylvania. I didn't even know that was a place. And for the longest time, no one knew how these candies were being produced. A couple of years ago, however, the company decided to give its customers a glimpse of the production process of its best-selling product, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Now, we have a very good idea of how they're made, and maybe you can try to recreate the candies if you're feeling adventurous. However, it is certain that nothing beats the real thing. The first step of production is the preparation of the peanut butter filling, and of course, the star of the show is the peanuts. A contractor supplies the factory with their weekly demand of fresh peanuts, which is over 1 million pounds per week. When these peanuts arrive at the factory, they are sieved to remove any dirt, and then they are put through a machine, which peels them and removes their coating. Afterward, the peanuts are arranged on a steel conveyor that doubles as a massive baking tray and transports them to the oven, where they are allowed to roast for about 10 minutes. After this time, the peanuts have a golden brown color which is satisfactory, and they are now fit for the next production step. After leaving the oven, the warm peanuts are taken to a giant food processor, where they are grinded up until the peanut paste is formed. This process takes barely a minute, and although the grinded peanuts look crumbly at first, further processing will convert them into a thick, wet paste. This is due to the remaining moisture content of the peanuts. However, this is not enough, so a factory worker adds a pre-measured amount of oil into the processed peanuts. The grinding goes on until the paste is smooth, but up until now, it is unsalted and unflavored. So the next step is adding sweeteners to the mix, which mainly includes salt, sugar, and dextrose. These newly added ingredients are mixed with the grinded peanuts at very high speed for a minute or two. And as you may have guessed, this peanut butter-based mixture becomes the filling in a classic peanut butter cup. A machine then pours several gallons of newly produced peanut butter into sterilized jars, which are kept until they are ready to be used in the production process. After the peanut butter has been produced, the next step is manufacturing the milk chocolate used to coat the entire candy. Just like with the peanut butter, the milk chocolate is also produced by the company. However, the harvesting and cleaning of the cocoa beans are not done in the factory. The factory gets its daily supply of good and clean cocoa beans, which they process and turn into chocolate. First, the beans are taken to an oven, where they are roasted for flavor and aroma. Next, a conveyor takes the cocoa beans to a machine, which separates them from their shell, while another machine, which works like a giant hairdryer, blows air on the beans at high speed to blow away the remnants of the shells before they are taken to a hydraulic press which extracts cocoa butter from the beans. This hydraulic press processes the cocoa, and after the cocoa butter and other byproducts have been extracted, what's left is liquefied pure dark chocolate, which is extremely bitter. But I'll have some, sign me up. I love dark chocolate. Since Reese's peanut butter cups aren't made using dark chocolate, this unrefined cocoa liquor is converted into milk chocolate by mixing it with several ingredients. These include cocoa butter extracted from the bean, tons of sugar, and lots of milk. The company also adds a special ingredient to the chocolate mix. However, they have decided to keep this piece of information a mystery. All these newly added ingredients are mixed thoroughly until the paste is extremely smooth. The paste is heated a couple of times until the desired texture of milk chocolate is formed to ensure that there are no lumps in there and that the ingredients are properly absorbed into the chocolate. The chocolate is then allowed to cool down and is transferred into large jars with taps at the bottom. Now it's time to prepare the cups, which takes us to the next production stage. A machine deploys paper cups onto a special conveyor with holes into which these cups are dropped. The technology behind this process is not 100% efficient so some factory workers are assigned to man the machine and ensure that mishaps are avoided or rectified. Some examples of such mishaps include more than one cup being deployed into a hole or a cup falling on an inappropriate part of the conveyor. While this is a very careful process, it is also incredibly fast, and not a lot of people can keep up with the speed of the conveyor. After this step, it's time to assemble all the ingredients that have been prepared so far. First, the conveyor passes the cups through a machine 
which serve specific portions of chocolate into them as they go. The chocolate fillings are then left to cool and harden before the cups are passed on to the next stage. At the next station, another machine adds the peanut butter filling to the chocolate layer. And finally, a third layer consisting of chocolate is added on top of the peanut butter. Mmm, nom 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 nom. The conveyor takes these filled up cups to a cooling area which helps speed up the drying process and harden the candy. After the candy solidifies, they are passed through a factory worker who inspects them and checks for any errors like candies that are not shaped properly, cups that were not neatly filled or double cups that weren't separated at the first checkpoint. The peanut butter cups that fall short in any way are thrown away. Hey, I'll take them. While the rest move on to the next production stage, which is the packaging. Like most steps described so far, the packaging is also done using mechanical equipment. This machine works in a sophisticated manner, and it's incredibly fast too, wrapping almost 800 cups per minute. After being wrapped in the signature orange wrappers, each pack is sealed and placed inside boxes to be sent off to retail stores within and outside the country. After all the above listed processes, Reese's peanut butter cups find their way to a supermarket or convenience store, where you buy them and eat as many as you can in a sitting. How often do you eat Reese's peanut butter cups? Leave your answer in the comments section below.